Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, the Lord has been good to us. Open the heavens, release to us great output of you know revelation on kingdom culture from the beginning till now. We've done 37 lessons so far, and now it's going to be 38. As a matter of fact, we're going to abridge the project and cap it around 40 or so, you know, but if we just want to, because the 22, the next master class needs, the classroom needs to be prepared and things need to be done, you know, to make sure that things are done properly. And so please, you bear with us that we're just going to sum up whatever we have in maximum of three lessons more to cap it up at 40 or thereabouts. So for now, lesson 38, we're going to do a thematic overview we did that at the beginning at the early part we gave an outline you know what holy spirit just bypassed us and gave us much more than what was on the outline differently so we're going to look at that outline again see where we can you know flesh it out a little bit and then focus you know check the things we already done and then check the things that we've not covered and then flesh it out so that we can have all that the Lord planned and then maybe some other time we can do a, another part of this very resource. Let's pray. Father in heaven, the great I am who I am, blessed be your name forever and we ask you to just have your way by your spirit. Be exalted, O God. There's none like you. Holy Spirit, we pray that you take the things of Yeshua Jesus and show us now. Do it according to the will of the Father in Yeshua's name. Amen. Bro, sisters, this is just a thematic overview of what this course was supposed to be. But then, as we said, the Lord took us in the direction it pleased him. We cover some of things in the thematic overview. Some have not been covered. And so we're going to just go on with them. Some of the things that have been explored include, number one, understanding the real mission of Yeshua. It was not just to pay the price for salvation of humanity by the blood he was shed at the cross of Calvary. There was wider and more strategic purpose, which is to restore the kingdom that Adam and Eve lost when they gave way to Satan to deceive them. And the mantle the Father gave to them as rulers of this earth, they handed over to Satan. So Yeshua came to restore that mantle and he restored it by his obedience to the Father and by his death at the cross of Calvary. In so doing, Satan gave himself an uppercut without knowing it. And Yeshua, all power in heaven and earth has been restored to him. And he is sitting in the heavenly realm waiting for the day. You know, saints will complete their part and their pilgrimage. A day will come when he will return. So those who tend to portray Yeshua as the founder of Christian religion, they do a disservice to him because that would be to reduce him to the stature of other human founders of religions. No, he came to restore the kingdom that Adam and Eve lost. Yes, in the process, salvation of humans was factored in. And the only one who believed in that blood sacrifice is saved. Then we also looked at, you know, we considered the issue of definition of kingdom culture. And we learned that kingdom culture is a way of life or the lifestyle of citizens of the kingdom. And it is the outcome of understanding and practice of the gospel of the kingdom. And speaking of the gospel of the kingdom, we considered an explanation of the essence of kingdom, essence of the concept of kingdom. Yeshua first preached the gospel of the kingdom, everything in the in, in in the faith has the law of first mention. Where was it first mentioned in the Bible? In Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. After his, you know, temptation in the wilderness, the very first message of Yeshua was the message of the kingdom. 417. From that time, Yeshua began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then the next thing we saw him go to where Peter and Andrew, his brother, were, and where James and John, his brother, were, and say, follow me, and make you fishers of men. Because the gospel of kingdom requires switch of loyalty. Loyalty to self, loyalty to the God of this world. You switch over to loyalty to the king. And the, 
key, the bridge between these two loyalty changes is what is called repentance. And interestingly, like John the Baptist, who didn't invite people to come and meet Elohim in the temple, but he drew them out of the temple. He drew them from the cities to the wilderness. So also Yeshua did not invite people to the temple because repentance and the change of Godship, change of Lordship happens in the heart. That's where repentance takes place. And so he called them. There were fishers of fish. He said, come and make you fishers of men. If you go to Matthew chapter 4 from verse 18 down to the end, you see this great transition. They left everything they were doing. They followed him. In this generation, the Lord may not ask everyone to be a full time. No, he doesn't even do that. But he says, let everybody enthrone me in the heart as Lord and Savior. Repent from the old way, from sin, and let me be the Lord of your life. And it doesn't matter where he places you, in the marketplace, in full time, in public service, you know, in local setting, the key thing is he reigns in our heart through us. And he says, I make you fishers of men. I make you people whose specialization is, is essentially my kingdom business becomes your paramount. Even if you're in the marketplace. In fact, the marketplace is the largest frontier of the gospel work in this generation. And we've got to know that. Then we see the interconnected dimensions of the kingdom. We saw it in the course of the teaching at the early part that we have kingdom within or kingdom now, which is the sovereign rule of the king in my heart. He takes over. He is my life. I'm dead to self. He takes over. He uses me to do whatever it pleases him. Where he says I go, I go. What he wants me to do, a priority he says for me, that's what I do. And that's the kingdom now. His kingdom within, his reign. Then we saw also kingdom nation. All those who have embraced the rule of Yeshua like this in their life, they all are part of one nation. And if it is so, then we need to know that as one nation, we are to live one culture, one culture. We no longer can hold our different cultures of our different continents, our different nations, our different people groups, no, because a king now rules us, his nature is what we bring forth. And that is why kingdom culture is a universal concept for the kingdom nation. Then there is kingdom to come when he will return to rule and reign from Jerusalem, the city of the great king. That's why Jerusalem is a very contested city. No emperor in history ever felt satisfied without adding Jerusalem as a crown jewel. And you thought you've seen something? You ain't seen nothing yet because Jerusalem will be a tough body same stone that the Gentiles are going to want to possess. The times of the Gentiles will come to an end one day. And the day will come when the ultimate king of the Gentiles, the Antichrist, will mass against Jerusalem to annihilate the Jews, annihilate Israel, and then the king of kings will come because he's the king of Israel. Yeshua is the king of Israel. He will come with the saints to rescue Israel from annihilation. So we got to know these things. When he comes, then he will rule from that city. Satan will be bound a thousand years. Yeshua will rule the whole world. And the good news is that he will rule alone. We are joined hairs with him. We are co-rulers with him. So whatever you're suffering or going through for his name's sake now, begin to know that the, your response should be that of joy, not of pain. Your response should be because you know that at the end of the day, if we suffer with him, we're going to reign with him. Remember Romans 8:17. Then we looked at the central concepts of the king of the kingdom. We looked at the concept of a supreme king, a king. Who has authority and power and rules and has everything it takes to be a potentate. Yeshua is the great potentate over the whole universe. We also looked at the concept of the domain of a king as the extent of territory of the king. The earth is the loss and the fullness thereof. The whole earth. But then the third thing we looked at is the concept of dominion of a king. Even though the earth is his and the fullness thereof, he does not force everyone on earth to willy-nilly bow to him. 
it gives people a choice and people may have a choice whether they want to obey him or whether they don't want to it's their business he doesn't force anybody those on this side of eternity who have opened their heart and say you know what i cannot run my life i'm insufficient by myself i'm incapable of running my life and they accept his invitation to die to self and allow him to take over and to reign in them they are his dominion king and dominion king's dominion that is the difference the domain is everybody he created heavens and earth all the universe everything the things that you know the the james webb space telescope and the hubble telescopes are finding out these are all part of his vast creation yet he's beyond them all if you know what scientists are discovering this modern time they are discovering a ring of fire a sphere of fire <laughs> you know it was so interesting and people are saying hell is there hell they say fire right around the earth you know what there are things we do not know but one day they will all be clear so the king is supreme ruler the domain is everything the dominion those who are subject to him then the concept of ambassadors are those who are specially commissioned to represent the king in the courts of other kings in other kingdoms and that's what he also wants us to be ambassadors of his kingdom that's why we're giving the holy spirit it's not for show it's not for tongues it's not for trying to impress anyone it is the instrument to which the power he will receive when he comes in to take over our lives then the way he wants he channels us to use us to represent the king where he has planted us and we do not you know we do not bother and worry about other people in a negative way we pray for them oh we hear okay there's going to be revival revival is breaking forth in ashbury let it be so don't be one of those who pull who something you don't know you begin to speak evil of it attack it on social media no be secure in yourself enough to say lord let it be so let it re let it break forth from ashbury to leave university let it be every campus in america let it be every campus in uk every campus in the world let it break forth among young people everywhere don't go to withstand what you don't understand at least pray for it with a pure heart with a pure mind brothers and sisters ambassadors of the kingdom represent the king who can't get involved in things that are not valid then the concept of citizens everyone who is born again is a citizen of the kingdom and then that brings an interesting issue that we are dual citizens we are citizens of heaven who are also resident in natural spheres or cities or nations and so we are citizen of heaven and citizen of the country where you are so that dual citizenship remember our conversation is in heaven our citizenship is in heaven and we are having an earthly experience is it for 100 years for 90 years for 80 years whatever number of years during that time it wants us to see ourselves as strangers and pilgrims don't clutch at things don't clutch at anything that can cost you the eternal no for the sake of the eternal we hold everything with empty hands we hold everything with empty hands so that we do not strive over anything that can take us off course pollute our heart and we feel bad no citizens of the kingdom we become so by the new birth experience then the concept of growth in grace even though we came into the kingdom as children we're not required to stay there in Second Peter three eighteen, he says, "But grow in grace and the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Yeshua." That growth is evident by fruit. For instance, if we abide in Yeshua, there will be fruit that will come forth. And we looked at properties of kingdom culture. We looked at, you know, what the the pillars of kingdom culture and all those things we looked at. It's important we know that as we abide in Him. And allow him to be to abide his word to abide in us. Holy Spirit works out as we said in the previous lessons. He works in us both to will and gives us the grace to do. So it's organic, organic that we live out 
the, the properties of the kingdom. So when he says the fruit of the spirit is love, you know, joy and all those, it's cause it fruit. It's not works. It's not works. It's not our works. It's fruit arising from what he's doing inside of us now manifesting so that when people come in contact with us and see how we live, see our trajectory of life, see our social media life, watch our Facebook pages, what comes out of it. It, it. Anybody who looks closely, if he can see Yeshua in us, he can see him manifested in all that, it's easy for that person to be open to hear his word through us. There's something else we looked at, the concept of the constitution of the kingdom. Every kingdom has a constitution. The, the book, the document, that defines the responsibilities of the king, the responsibility of the people, the privileges of the king, the privileges of the people, all that. And the, the constitution of the kingdom is the holy scriptures. That's what it is. It's not a book of ideas. It's not a book of suggestions. It is the constitution that governs how we live in the kingdom. And the Lord wants us to see, put it so. There's something we didn't look at because enough time and now we can just have a sketch of it and that's the concept of the justice reward and punishment system every kingdom has a justice system a judicial system and in that judicial system you know what it rewards people who live well according to the constitution it also punishes those who do not live well some people are sent to jail short term, middle term, long term, some are even hanged or punished in very gruesome ways according to the laws of the constitution. And so also we need to know that right from the beginning of time, even from Genesis chapter 2, the Lord gave indication of the constitution. He said to Adam, you know what, you can eat any fruit, any, but you see this one, please don't touch don't eat. The day you eat, you'll die, meaning you'll be separated from me. That's constitution. Of course, Satan beguiled Eve. She ate, gave to Adam. Their eyes were open. They discovered they were naked. They were separated from Elohim. And human beings have suffered that separation from that time till now. Yeshua has come to pay the price for our recovery into that original state of being with the Lord. And the kingdom that the Lord is head of is a kingdom where he doesn't force us. You see, in ancient times, the Lord demonstrated it with Israel. If you want to know the reward and the punishment system of the kingdom, the best way to start is in the Pentateuch, you know, the first five books of the Bible, you know, Moses wrote by inspiration. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, for instance. You see, a book of rewards and punishments. For instance, let me read a few verses of Deuteronomy 28 for you. It shall come to pass, that's verse 1, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the Lord, voice of the Lord thy Elohim, to observe to do all his commandments which are commanded this day, that the Lord will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy Elohim, Blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. Blessed shall be the fruit of the ground, the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed are thy basket and thy store. Blessed are they are thou when thou comest in, and blessed are thou when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thee thy face they shall come against thee one way and they flee before thee seven ways may this also be the portion of all who live in kingdom culture the lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses and in that thou settest thy hands to do and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy Lord Elohim giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he had sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep his commandments of the Lord, and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. 
and the Lord shall make thee plenteous in good, in the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven, to give the rain unto the land in the season, and to bless all the work of thy hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy Elohim, which I commanded this day, to observe and to do them, and thou shalt not go aside, from any of the words which I command thee on the right hand, on the left hand, to go after other gods to serve them. Blessings pronounced on Israel. If they will obey the Lord. And then uh, the Lord said also there is a you know a punishment for those who disobey. He said in verse 15, But it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these causes shall be come upon thee and overtake thee. Cause shall thou be in the city, cause shall thou be in the field. Cause shall thou be, you know, cause shall be thy basket and thy store. Cause shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of the land, the increase of thy kind, the flocks of thy sheep. Cause shall thou be when thou comest in, cause shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke. In all that thou settest thy hands unto to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. The Lord shall make the pestilence to cleave upon thee, until he has consumed thee from off the land, and with a few in of the land, whither thou goest to possess it. And then he went on to many other things, all the way to the end. A very strong, terrible things. That is the reward and punishment system, the judicial system the Lord has. In Israel, we're told in Isaiah 1, 18 to 19. You know what? In 19, he says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with a sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. In the new covenant, the Lord adopts a different approach. The Lord places the onus on saints to decide how they will respond. He doesn't force anyone. The issue of the will. He respects our will. He doesn't force anyone to do what he wants. For instance, in the book of John, chapter 15, from verse 17, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, it shall be done. If you abide in him, and the word abides in you, in the first place you are not going to pray outside his will. Because the word abiding in you will guide you to pray his will. And then he says, Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so that you shall be my disciples. As the Father had loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandment, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy shall remain in you, and your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. He tell to, I call you not servants, but I call you friends, for a servant doesn't know what the Lord do it. Men and brethren, the Lord says he wants us to do things out of the place of love. We obey him out of love, not slavish fear. But we know also the consequence of not obeying him. You know, in Mark 9, from 9, from verse 40 to verse 48, the Lord warned the people, look, whatever that will make you to, you know, disobey and go outside my will, he says, you know what? If it's a part of your body, get it out. Whether it's eye or hand, get it out. In other words, there is great punishment, eternal hellfire that is forever and ever. So don't go there living the way you want. Let me rule you and let me guide you. Let me use you and then there is safety. And while we are on earth, he says, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. All these things that people are struggling for, I'm going to cause them to 
gravitate towards you by the principle of favor. So there's a reward system in the kingdom. The Lord wants to visit us with his favor so that it's not by power or by might, it's not by struggle, it's by grace we live. Our economic system is based on grace. Our social system is based on grace. A grace is what God has already done by himself, by his power, and then makes available to us so that there's nothing to boast. There's nothing to compare ourselves with people. Everybody has a niche. Everybody has a lane. Everybody help your brother to the left, to the right, to, you know, cheer them on, affirm them, speak well of them, encourage them, and any helping hand you can do, give it so that everybody can succeed in the kingdom. The kingdom sky is too wide that two best can never collide. If you are not giving something, you may not see it. But the one you are given, see it very well and make sure that what is given to you, you do it exceedingly well by his grace. Everybody is blessed. The kingdom is blessed with any breakthrough each of us does. So this is why in the kingdom, we culture of the kingdom, we also examine it, acceptable norms of the king constitution, how we live, and to some extent, we looked at security provisions and blessedness of kingdom citizens as a working kingdom culture. You know what? If we live the kingdom culture life, we are secure in the Lord. That's Colossians 3, 1 to 3 tells us if we are, we, we are indeed risen with Yeshua. If we're indeed redeemed by the blood and are dead to self, we stay in the heavenly realm where Yeshua dwells. Our life is hidden with the, in Yeshua in the Father. And then the power of the blood, the Bible says we overthrow the enemy by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, Revelation 12, verse 11. And we have the capacity to resist Satan. In 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. And of course, to trample upon serpents and scorpions, to bind the powers of darkness and take them out of the way. We are not alone. He says, I will never leave you or forsake you. All the days, all power in heaven and on earth is given to him. He said, I'm with you always. It's a secure kingdom. It's one where we are secure in him. And it's also a kingdom where we don't stay where we used to be. We have room to grow daily. You know, when we started this course 40 days ago or 30 something days ago, you know what? From then till now, for as many as are open, growth has been taking place because we start as children, kingdom citizens children, then we grow to become disciples. We move from believing on him to followers of him as the world challenges us and the spirit shows us that look, this area, this area, then we grow on to followers of him. We grow on to become sons of Elohim who know who we are in him and who is in us. We take responsibility for the estate of our father. We grow to become royal priests after the order of Melchizedek. You know, who can function not by the natural strength alone, but by the supernatural strength of causing things that be not to be and intervening from the spiritual realm to determine things in the earth realm. That is what happens with certain realms of prayer and you know, strategic level spiritual warfare. We can deal with things in the heavenlies and make sure that things in the natural are manifest. Then the Lord wants us to know that, look, prayer is communion with the Father. He's in heaven, we're on earth. And how do we meet him? By faith and by prayer. Constant prayer, pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians 5 7 says, you know, 17 says, and then our ministry assignments as royal priests. You know what? All of us are called. You see, in the kingdom, the kingdom culture does not accept the Levitical order. Kingdom culture rejects the Nimrodic order. Why? In kingdom culture, every single believer is called to ministry male, female, young, old. You know what? Everyone is called. Everyone is called and given gifts and callings, gifts and talents, capacities with which we are going to do the work of the Lord. And men and brethren, we also have the grace to reproduce after kind. The Lord calls us to be fishers of men. So as the Lord 
processes you, the revelation that empowers you, you take that same revelation, take it to other people, it empowers them. That's Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. And by the grace of the Lord, we therefore are disciples who make other disciples. We are trainers to train other people. And the Lord says we are the salt of the earth. We did extensive teaching on this aspect. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. We have the transformative catalytic role of leaven like in Matthew chapter 13 verse 33 the woman took put in measures of flour until all was leavened salt a little tincture is put in food huge food that little tincture brings out the taste and salt preserved from corruption anywhere we are we can't be indifferent to the socioeconomic issues, to the crime issues, or whatever issues in our environment, we engage with them. First, starting with prayer, then warfare. We allocate the spirits at work and deal with them, take away their capacity to, you know, what determine how things will be. And we exercise the authority in the kingdom. And we believe in the growth of the mustard seed in the kingdom something starts small though your beginning be small your latter end shall be great we learn to do things we learn to start small and give it room for growth it is a kingdom way it's a kingdom lifestyle it's a culture of the kingdom brothers and sisters we'll stop here and then we'll see whether we can use the next two lessons to conclude this course so we can prepare for the next program that is going to start pretty soon. Brothers and sisters, we love you and, you know, keep us in prayer. And we also pray that this word will not fall on ordinary ground, but these words will fall on fertile soil, that Holy Spirit will plow the heart of everyone who is in this class and those who are going to hear and those who are going to watch later, and it will bring forth fruit 30-fold, 60-fold, hundredfold and you see the transformation and people around you will see the transformation that's going on in you because you gave this word attention this cost 38 lessons so far and can i encourage you to share this video and not just this video other videos of the series share them don't be weary don't be tired then look for two three four five people you have the grace to enable to get the same revelation Get together small groups and start a, a, a discussion group on kingdom culture. Get together, people, and see what the Lord can do through that. And by the grace of the Lord, he will do what only him can do. By word of assignment, number one, please summarize what you learned from this lesson. What have you learned from this lesson today? And what to, what will you do with this lesson? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you because you are good. Your mercies endure forever. We give you all glory, all honor, all adoration. We say, have your way. That which you have done here today, we declare that nothing can undo it. Let the blood seal it in the hearts and minds and will and emotion of your people. That it will produce the fruit you desire from everyone according to your determinate counsel, 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. Let your name be glorified, Father, in Yeshua Jesus' name. Amen and amen.